Once again, 420, welcoming you back to the second episode of Flores y Cultura. Man, no round of applause, please. No round of applause. I like the silence. I like the silence. It allows me to concentrate and do what it is that I got to do. Canterville, first off, thank you very much. Once again, I get a chance to talk my shit. Sorry, talk my stuff. I want to I wanna brand myself so I don't want no cursing. So first off, I really want to say, um, man, sad news, right? Yesterday, my man Kobe, sport legend, just passed away. And the only reason I'm bringing the homie up is not because um, I'm a big basketball fan or I watch a sport. But he just put in perspective some of the things that um, we're taking for granted. This man woke up yesterday and decided to go out with his baby girl, same age as my daughter. And he never made it home. His wife was just stuck at home waiting for the, uh, the man to show up with his baby girl. He never got home, man. So the reason that made me start thinking is life is very short, right? And no matter how much fame... The man had how much money, all that did not stop him or help him when his uh, accident occurred. Now he's left behind a family, a recent baby girl, and it just made me think all the mistakes that, that we do and how, if not corrected, and something happens to us, man, and we leave un unresolved business, unresolved issues. Start thinking about the people that are left behind, right? And they're just like what it is. So I want to say something that is uh, like I keep telling you guys, this is Flores y Cultura. I want to say what's up, man, to the koala right here. Just walked in the building real quick, man. A little song about the Latino perspective and being a motero, man. We Latino men do not talk about our feelings very much. We are told that we are macho, we are fuerte, and uh, that whole feelings is para tu hermana, right? So we're thinking about this whole Kobe thing. Again, it's not because he's a basketball player and I'm trying to ride on the whole wave, but with him being gone, start thinking about myself, my mistakes, what I do, the life I am currently walking on. And if anything were to happen to me when I step out of this building, when I come out of my doors, and I can't apologize to the people I've offended, that I've hurt, or that I keep doing the same things to, I would think it would be very painful, not only for them, but for me. And the fact that I'm alive and um, this current situation just made me reflect a little bit, again, on the whole Latino thing, and us not being able to talk about our feelings and things that are going on through our head. I want to take time out here, man, while I'm taking my little paid time to just say that I am sorry that sometimes Cuatro is an asshole. I do feel bad that sometimes Cuatro has no empathy for what people are going through when I can't understand it. And those people that get bothered by it, get hurt by my words and actions, I want to say I'm sorry. It's making me reflect in the small time we have here on earth, the small time that we are allowed because after this, when you close your eyes and you don't come back, when you step out of your house and you don't come home, you don't wake up from your sleep, and you have all these things that you didn't do, right? You have a lot of regrets. I think one of my biggest regrets is going to be that, not being able to say I'm sorry when I should have. So with this man's passing and reflecting on that, on a personal note, I am very sorry to those who I keep hurting. Tu sabes quién eres, y lo siento. I want to take this Flores y Cultura to something great, something amazing, something never been seen in the city. So I'm going to take a little break, give him a little intro. I'm going to smoke a little bit, say hi to the people that showed up to support, 
and we'll be back. Homie, did you get that uh, musica? Okay. We're going to resend the homie some music. So in the next break, you guys are on board. Shout out to my man Pete. Talking Dre, be here. Muchas gracias. Be back. Thank you, thank you.
Um, uh, Amanece por la boca que mueren los peces. Déjense de hablar estupideces, no es lo que parece. No me dieron nada y dicen ese. Trabaja duro apenas tenía 13, 13 veces. Dijeron cosas que no debían. Yo no grind de noche y de día. Dijeron no podía. Perdónalo, señor, no sabían las pendejadas que decían. Tantas veces dijeron cosas que no debían. Yo no grind de noche y de día. Dijeron no podía. Perdónalo señor, no sabía Las pendejadas que decía Y aquí yo le sigo A ni uno de ellos le he pedido Los problemas los arreglé yo mismo Mi más sentido Pésame al desconocido Sufre el cancillo <coughs> Yo, welcome back, Annabelle <coughs> Your host once again Your friend Mexicano 420 I know, behind them, underneath the mask You couldn't even tell that it wasn't me so, again, man, back to the uh, the topic that I was trying to discuss a little bit, right? I just want to know how come as a culture, we Latinos have to be so machista. We have to be so, uh, you know, let me take that back. Let me take that back. I don't consider myself to be machista. That's, you know, that sexist shit, that macho shit where, like, a woman's got to do certain things just because she's a woman. I, I don't think I'm that dude. But I think my culture has a lot of that. I think the culture that I grew up when I was a kid has a lot of that. My tios and grandparents and shit like that. I think people like me and my generation, I think it's more like I want that nice shit that I did see where women were doing certain things based just on their role as a woman in that family. If she was a mother, she was cooking, she was cleaning, she was taking care of kids, sewing, washing, and it wasn't so much that she was scared to talk and say, yo, I don't want to do this. Um, this is unfair. I think the women in those times, they, they knew that the role they were playing was not, I don't think it was sexist. I don't think it was divided. I just think they knew that in order for the family to function, their role was this. And if the man went out and gave you your allowance for, I mean, this happened in America too. If you look at I Love Lucy episodes, Fucking Ricky, la Latino, a Cuban, right, was given an American woman in New York an allowance to be, to buy groceries, clothing herself, clothing the family. So it's not a, just in Latino countries now. Ricky, yeah, now that culture, that's what I'm saying, that's what I was about to get to. I think it had to do with it being the 50s and the fact that Ricky was Latino. So it was two things. It wasn't just Ricky being Latino. A traditional Latino. So I think the the age that we're in now where a Latina perceives the, the housework. I was a kid, the, my, my, my titis and all of my, like they all had me saying words like toto y tetas and shit like that, tempranito when I was little. Yeah. No, you're right about what you're saying. Like in our culture, they raise us to be these big macho men because they don't want us to run around trying on our sister's dresses. Yeah. Straight up. Yeah. So like at an early age, they were teaching me, you know, what a toto was, y que era teta, you know what I'm saying? Like quick. And they wanted me to say chocha and teta. Like yes. when I said that, they, they were proud they of laugh, me and they right? would laugh and it would be cute. You know what I'm saying? They dap you up. But that was because that's that fucking stigma, right? So you're right. Like in our culture... It, you're 100% right. Even And in your culture, nigga, you gay, they throwing rocks at you. Yeah. You I, I, actually, thing. that's a great point you bring because I was going to ask Pete if on the ep, on the break he wanted to come. I wanted to speak to somebody else who wasn't Latino and see what their culture, if we had something similar, you know. So if you're down after the, the break, okay, that's what's up, man. We're going to have Pete talk about how he feels and what he's seeing. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> I don't want that on this episode. That's a special episode. Yeah, bro, I got something to say. Right? <laughs> but, um, yeah, man, like when I was a kid, the uh, the Mexican movies that we had that were comedies involved a lot of, a lot of nude, nude women. A lot of nude women and, and sexist and crude and sexual jokes and just about, like if there was a, a new receptionist, the main, the, the boss was trying to hit it. If it was a new maid, the mother-in-law, the sister-in-law, the niece, the neighbor, that's all these Mexican movies were. And I was six years old watching these with my father. And at no point did my father shield my eyes, tell me to leave the room. He didn't say shit. 
And at six years old, I already knew that I was aroused by boobies. Yeah. Fuck yeah, I knew it. <laughs> I already knew. You know? When I got to 13, man, I was already like, no, mommy, we need more than this. I've seen this shit. <laughs> right? But that's the culture that, that has produced this man that I am today. Now, I'm not a bad man. You know, some days. But my culture dictates that I that I I follow a certain code and guidelines, man. And this code and guidelines has been getting me in trouble my whole life. Like I say, I'm not sexist, I'm not machista, but my way of thinking is very old school. My way of thinking is how my father thought and how those old men in those movies thought that if I'm dating you and something's wrong. Shit, man, it's it's not Captain Saber holding me. It's me being a man, and your problems have become my problems, and your problems are solved by me. There's no need for you to stress, no need for you to cry. This is why you got Cuatro on your side. But that realization of me trying to be a man in my culture makes me insensitive, makes me a person who doesn't listen, and I think sometimes makes me not have empathy in the moment that I need it, you know? I could see a homeless dude and I could throw money and I could give him big kush and I could him the rest of my day and I could feel bad for the homeless situation. But I think when I'm going through something with a female, my culture, the way I grew up, hinders my ability to be sensitive. So now my question, some Latinos in here, is that my fault or is that our culture? You know, you brought up a certain way, bro. Yeah. You know, I thought you were brought up a certain way. And kids today aren't brought up that way. Toxic masculinity. Toxic masculinity. That's what's up. I like that word. Man, PG just said it is toxic masculinity. This macho shit that we have, man. If I think if I would have, I have three daughters. If I would have had a boy, I think I would have uh, beat him, maybe. I, I think so. I think I would have been like hard on his ass. I think I would have told him too that two and three years old, stop crying. Fuck, get up. It's just a fucking scrape. Shit. But my baby could have a fucking hangnail and goddamn, she falls on the floor, I'm punching the floor for her. And she'll say, Daddy, no, you're going to hurt your hand. I don't care, man. The floor hurts you. The tree, whatever. Just to make her feel good. But that's my baby girl. That's a double standard too, though. Exactly. You see, that's what my culture is. My culture says that I got to protect my family, my, my, my wife, my mother, my sister, my daughters, right? I have to be this man that provides you shelter, food, clothing, love. But my culture doesn't tell me how to be understanding to a female, a female's actual need. So let's say, let's say you got a job. Women are supposed to be more emotional and submissive anyway, so I think that's that's a part of it. Like, you know, we're supposed to be the emotional ones. You guys aren't supposed to feel, quote unquote, anything. But you know, nowadays I think people are oversensitive, so you you have <coughs> to, uh, to make yeah. up for it. <coughs> and for me, <coughs> the way I was raised up, I have that problem that I say. You're being oversensitive right now. Because I, I'm, I'm like, no, fuck that. Shouldn't bother you. Don't cry. Don't let her run off. But I, because, again, I don't have that understanding, that sympathy. And like I said, I can hear Pete's situation and be sympathetic to my man, to my homie, my brother, the dude who's going through shit. But I'll be honest, and this is what this show's about. Me as a Latino man, I fucking suck as being your novio. Because you're I can't understand to be tough. you. You were raised to be tough yourself, so you couldn't even I express your own feelings about how you were, you know, even if you were emotional, you couldn't. Exactly. It's the same for Arabs. It's the same for a lot of Middle Easterns, for Indians, I'm, I'm sure. Bro, it's the same for a lot like of cultures. A man is supposed to be a certain way, and he's supposed to be tough, and don't have any emotions, and don't be a pussy, basically. Yeah. And so you from see? that, you don't learn how to be sensitive to a woman because you're the tough one. She's the emotional one. Stop fucking crying. That's how it's going to be. Yeah, see, Pete said right now, he said he sees me smile like Tino 10 times a day. I like to smile. I like to laugh. 
but but I uh, but I also seen you like you know show a serious facade because you were brought up that way. Yeah. You were brought up tough, so you. Have yeah, to I got like this scroll. Yeah. yeah. One time I walked into the store right at Pentagon Mall with this dude with me. He's a black dude, bigger than me with dreads. He looked more street than I ever will. Showed you at the street in, in the in the store, approached him, and was like, you know, how can I help you? Blah, blah. And I was like, yo, how come you ain't talk to me? You just passed me. She goes, oh, you know, you're not approachable. Facts. And I said, again, the way I'm looking at you right now, this is my question mark yeah, face. Yeah. Just like this, she goes, yeah, look at your face. I don't want to talk to you. You look mean. I said, what the fuck you mean? How do I look mean? But she goes, that squirrel. You were brought up that way, bro. Now, take somebody who's just nice as fuck all the time, always joking around, don't got a mean bone in their body, right? They wasn't brought up the same way you were. Their parents probably never hit him. They probably never yelled, right? They got grounded maybe twice, right? Stuff like that. <coughs> but you were brought up a completely different way, and you present that. You, that's what you put back into the environment. <coughs> yeah, that is true, man. That is very true. So... I'm trying to change that. I'm seeing a lot of things that I'm that I'm doing wrong in this new adventure that I'm going on. And I want to grow as Cuatro I want to grow as a brand. And I have to grow as a person. But I'm fucking up because I'm letting my culture dictate how I, I should react, how I should act, and how I should be. I, I, I want to kick back, and I don't want your problems to be my problems no more. I really, I really feel like that. I feel like whoever I date, I feel bad for your situation, but Cuatro should not worry. I, you know, I could worry with you, right? I can help you, but I don't want it to be my problem because I may get my problem when I date somebody because that's, that's what I see. My father used to tell me, like, I'll give you a story. My daddy, we walked the street, and he punched the dude that was pissing on the street when we walked by. He told my mom and me to keep walking, went back down, punched the shit out of him for doing that as his wife and son were walking the street. From that, that image at, at four years old, I took it hardcore. Like, it's my duty and I have to do this. But again, that's all I have to do. When they tell me, hey, listen, you, you gotta, no, I don't. I do this, this is this. Long as I do this, this should be it, you know? So I think um, with the whole culture, I'm not machista. I don't want to be machista. I want to chill. I want to be kicked back. This is America. Women have these these rights, and they are entitled to be loved, to be careful and cherished. But I want to also understand how come it's perceived now in 2020 that doing housework is... Criada is, that's, my mama was stupid for doing that for a man. I'm not going to do that myself now. This is when that tradition and the new school clash. And that's when I cannot understand how to handle this with the whole culture. Say it, because they got to hear uh, different perspectives, and that's what I want to do here. For lack of a better way to say it, a woman should also know her place in a relationship. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying her place is the kitchen and clean and do, but uh -huh. that, you know, that's what we do. We 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 are nurturing people. We that's what that's how we were brought up, no matter the culture. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you have to keep some of it. I mean, normally if you walk into a single woman's house, it's gonna be a whole lot cleaner than a man, a single man's house, right? Mm -hmm. We clean better, we do better, we cook better. We that's that's in our blood. I don't know, you know. So I'm not saying the woman should do all of that, and he should be the the you know the one that brings in the money. But there's there's things you gotta hold on to, cultural yeah, things, of or you gotta Those hold things, on to. They're it, there for a reason. It, it, and that's why I say. It's not a sexist comment, but I think the role that you would play in a relationship needs to always stay. Because as a man, right, if, if you're a man, if you heard a noise, if you heard a window break in your home at 2 in the a.m. and you hit my man over there who's pretty big, you, you say, yo, my man, someone's trying to break in. And he looks at you like, 
Call the police. I'm going in the closet. You going to look at him like, that's some bitch shit. You know what I'm saying? If. If you if your man is not willing to do the certain things, the heavy lifting, the the go extra things for you, the manly shit, the manly the shit that your mama said he ain't a man if he's not this, the shit that your father said he's not a man if it's that, you know, he is not a man. I do have daughters. I have three. Do you treat your daughters like you want them to get used to being treated? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What her, what her, yeah, exactly. Not like princess and shit. No, I, I want my daughters to know that this is how a man treats. But see, again, right? That's me with my daughters. That's my daughters, the double standard. That's me, them. But that nurturing, that understanding when when you cry or when you're hurting in a, in a relationship, I have no empathy for that while it's happening. But the fact that you realize that you have no empathy for it means you realize it enough to see the wrong in it. That means yeah. you want to I, I'm just confused as to what can can we do? I mean, listen. that's Literally. very hard. Literally, just listen. Wow. Do you know that that's very hard for me? Shout out to uh, Puerto Rico. They're winning two to one. Two to one. <laughs> it's very hard for me. That's my biggest flaw in relationships is listening. Listening, man. Yes. And I don't understand why. I just want to... Uh, to me, it's a lot. It, it feels like whining. It's not listening. It's like if I if I think I'm correct, then it's whining to me what you're doing. Second. And that is just based again with everything that I just said. You just think you're correct, not if you know you're correct. Just if you think. Man, let's think about that one. I, I would say the sixty percent of the time, I'm gonna be right. Right. The other forty. Is my pride telling me, motherfucker, you are right. Shut her up. You know? But most of the times, I think that if I have a solution and we both go with it, we both are riding the same wave to solution. As opposed to you looking at it like I'm dictating what you should be doing to shut me up. I'm not thinking that way. But my culture, la mujer, this is when it flips. La mujer, Latina thinks that because you suggest, because you open your mouth, you have a thought, you are mandándola. You are telling her. And there's no way that you are daddy outside of the fucking bedroom. You're not, and those are a lot of words you hear. You're not my fucking father. I want to clean up my language because I want this show to be nice. I apologize. You are not my father. You are not my boss. A Latina feels that you are trying to control her when you're trying to handle the situation. Because it goes back to you guys were brought up a certain way. And in the culture, the guy had to be tough and the girl had to be a certain way in the house and have certain, you know, a girl can't go out past a certain time, but a guy can do whatever the hell he wants. You know what I mean? So she had to grow up through all of that, and now she's with a man she wants to be with that she chose, <coughs> and he's treating her like her family treated her growing up. So, yeah, she's going to be like, you're not my father. Whoa. <coughs> that is uh, <coughs> a little bit enlightening. I never saw it that way. <coughs> I never saw it that way. A lot of <coughs> some of the girls that I've dated have had issues where They've had some fucked up baby daddies or ex-boyfriends and shit like that. <coughs> brothers. I've seen that in brothers. Brothers being mean to these girls and they looking at me like, help. And I'm a dick. I'm like, mm, what do I do? <coughs> I just turn around, what the fuck you want me to do? You're not my girl. But that's what they, they look for, that protection. But <coughs> if it's going to be both ways, and I want to change, right? We want to change 2020. How can La Mujer Latina stop feeling like that and be open to letting a man, how can I say this? Letting him in? Letting him guide, you know? Because, you know, I'm a firm believer that if you got a, a better plan than I do for us to, to be better, make letting better money, be yeah, then... Use a female, you say, Papi, I think this is a better way, and check this out. 
Damn, that is a better way. Well, fuck it. You take the lead. Do it. See, like right now, right now I want to take a break and I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear Lydia, to be honest. But see, there it goes again though, right? They, there it goes. It's starting to kick in and I'm being honest right now. It's starting to kick in. It's like, yeah, okay, but now I'm saying something else, but you're going back to the same shit. She wants to be heard. No, and that's what this is. And this is what Flores y Cultura is supposed to be about. And I like this. I'm glad that my people is here to have this. Communication. Communication. You have to listen just as much as you want to be heard. She wants to be heard. She has her own thoughts. She has, she has, she her, has own her own personality. Her own thoughts as well. She has her own thoughts. That's some bullshit. I should have known, huh? Oh, man. Pete, get, get on, homie, because I don't think I'm doing no breaks. We're just going to keep it going through the whole time. Yeah, just get in, homie. All right, uh, give Pete his own camera and uh, his mic. One recording studio. Oh. Y'all niggas bring the stars out. True story as it come out. This the life that I'm talking about. I'm alive with my lifestyle. Same thing when the lights out. Send the words in my arms out. Break bread and we haul out. Dark night when we ball out. Y'all niggas bring the stars out. True story as it come out. This the life that I'm talking about. I gotta get it for family. The reason I'm staying alive. For my son, he gon' pay me. Daddy won't get him for five. Put my name now in my city, they yeah, adore me. I pee haters like I see your soul. No one will win when I down on that road. Now I just smile when that camera roll. Look in the mirror, see Grumman with gold. If he asleep, they would get him a spose. I will say yes when I see the real goals. Be through the struggle, my brothers will know. Seven million views, I thought I won't flow. Tell me what you didn't heard about me. Been through hell and I see nobody. Tell my mama I'm gonna be somebody. I gotta be somebody. I need to be somebody. I'm alive with my lifestyle. 10K with the lights out. Stash your work at my aunt's house. Break bread, they were all out. Dark night when we ball out. Young niggas bring the stars out. True story as it come out. This the life that I'm talking about. I'm alive with my lifestyle. 10K with the lights out. Stash your work at my aunt's house. Break bread, they were all out. Dark night when we ball out. Young niggas bring the stars out. True story as it come out. Life that I'm talking about. I need this money a little faster. Lord, don't blame me, I'm a father. On the streets, I'm a shotter. To my bros, it don't matter. Hustle hard like a baka. And the scale do a number. Got young is on the corner. On the off, we're gonna bump it. Pretty squad on the Sunday. We're gonna fight, we're gonna gun play. Either way, we're gonna solve it. High as hell off the molly. Sipping act with a jolly. Me and you. Can I bought it? Oh boy, need a cut it. Broke his hell on your thirties. I see some shit as a youngin. I would say keep it on something. Always with the grown ups, tryna learn something. Seventy pushing my own whip. Twenty two when I took my trip. Ain't no snitching on my lip. Fuck nigga, can't know where I live. Tell me what you didn't heard about me. Been through hell and I see nobody. Tell my mom I'ma be somebody. I gotta be somebody. I need to be somebody. I'm alive with my lifestyle. 10K when the lights out. That's your work in my own show. <coughs> All right, everybody, welcome back, man. Welcome back. Welcome back to Flores y Cultura. I got a special guest. The awkwardness right here. I mean, you just see his face. They ain't seen you. How long, man? Um, since December. Damn, that's a long time. That was what last year? 
Yeah, man. It's last decade. Last decade. I haven't been around since last decade, my God guy. I did. So it's a special appearance then, right? Bro, you got a show. I got to pull up. Muchas gracias, man. This is the manito right here. Anybody who don't know, this is uh, the koala. This is your dabbers. Talking to... Well, do your thing. You want me to do it? Right. Hazlo, man. All right, look, man. What up, 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 what up? It's your boy J All Day, a.k.a. District Dabbers, a.k.a. One of One, none before me, none to come, a.k.a. DC Boom Gang General. I'm in the building with my bro, Cuatro Veinte, and this is Flores y Cultura. Oite, hijo puta. We in the building, baby. You ready to take a dab? I'm ready, man. Right. The first Cana Latino show in the city. In Cannaville, hopefully, we make Cannaville a worldwide word, man. Bro, it's a state of mind. It is. See, I'm gonna tell you like this: when when my brain grows, anywhere you go is Cannaville. Anywhere there's a smoker, that's Cannaville. So you in California and you want to hashtag Cannaville, you are technically in Cannaville. Amsterdam is Cannaville. Your backyard is Cannaville, man. Right. Trademark though, if you are gonna do that. Yeah, send me a little cash app. I got you. <laughs> cash app link in bio. You got a premium Snapchat? Yes, I do, babe. That's what's up. Yes, I do. That's what's up. You guys will see me do special Lucha things. Lucha uncut. You'll, oh, you'll see the mascara. <laughs> but that's all you'll see. Yeah, yeah, man. It's the mask unmasked. <coughs> Papo. Yo, for the record, I called <coughs> the winner of the mask the first episode. <coughs> oh, shit. We got to get DJ Bud. Yo, shout out DJ, DJ Bud. Bud, man. Bro, DJ Bud just had a baby, man. God bless. <laughs> yeah, so God everybody bless. make some noise for DJ Bud. Yeah, everybody, everybody. Scratch. Yeah. We should scratch for DJ Bud. Right? Papa, whenever you get a chance and you're not busy, you could give him a little bit of the little joint we got in the fridge. When you got the chance, when you got the chance. Everybody, I was gonna hook y'all up with a little bit of sound, man. One second, one second. So you know it wouldn't be it wouldn't be right if we didn't, you know. Come on, bro, you know what it is. So we're gonna put this diamond right here. Cause I'm gonna die. Cause I'm gonna die. Okay. That's a dab. That's not a dab. That's a dab. You see, no ready? All you gotta do is breathe, bro. But listen, this is the thing. There's no cap. No cap. So you gotta breathe. You can't. So if you gotta take a break, breathe through your nose. No cap. Who know? Ready? Yeah. No cap. No cap. No cap. No cap. Damn. Go. Dale. 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 Breathe through your nose if you gotta exhale. Yeah. Yeah. Exhale. Oh, bro. Oh, bro. He's out of here. He forgot to exhale, bro. He forgot to exhale. I'm getting tagged in. So look, I'm, I'm going to be your host for the rest of the episode, you know what I'm saying? My, my bro Cuatro Bente is over here struggling a little bit. He just took a dab of the amazing uh, Mother of Berries diamonds that, you know, the big homie got on deck. Um, I mean, I can't give you a better, a better uh, testimonial, you know what I'm saying? Shit is gas. Um, Act, yeah, act now while supplies last. Bro, he put his hand on his head. And wait, there's more. <laughs> Bro, this man put his Damn, hand I'm kind of, I'm kind of jelly. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna come with you. I wanna come along with you. This is my chance. <laughs> Yo, PJ, can we get like a maybe like a like a oh, trapping man, in Japan or something good? <laughs> Oh yeah, or maybe like smoking <coughs> in my car or some shit. <coughs> can I see that water, that big bottle of water? You please? can see it, but you can't drink it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you. And this is why I stick to flowers. <laughs> Fuck your dabs. <laughs> Fuck your dabs. <laughs> <coughs> Holy shit. Man, I'm hot. I want to take off my shirt. <laughs> but, yeah, but not yet. bro. No, not yet, it's it, not yet. Acceptable, bro. Man, ever since uh, I quit my job, I, I ain't been no gym, I ain't work out, and I am not happy. But this is why I'm doing my show, because I'm going to look back, right? I'm going to be like, okay, estabas gordo aquí, marrano, <laughs> you're fixing yourself. Oh, it is working, it is working. And then when we do the Canna Fest, 
anybody gets stupid, now you know why. Six pack. Because I've been working. No, six pack ain't never going to happen. I'm going to be honest. Six pack is never going to happen. Okay. Never. But. A party I will, bowl. I, I will get back to what I was a year ago, man. I was. We'll I was a little bit we'll more. I look viejo today, man. Like I'm looking myself on the camera, and I look fucking old, and I'm not old. I promise you. You old? Yeah. You could try to guess, and then I tell you. Yeah, yeah, I'm forty. I'm forty. But normally that, normally no, no, that's bullshit because like normally nobody says forty on the fucking first. No, it's not okay. Well, we got to. I know, but it's not okay. No one says 40, you know? It's okay to be 40. No, no, it's, it's not okay. okay. Like, it's, I'm comfortable bro. being 40. We got two 40 year olds on camera right now, bro. <laughs> we got two 40 year olds on camera right now. See, I'm, com- I'm comfortable. <laughs> I don't even think this joint working. This episode is brought to you by the AARP. Is it working? Look, I'm comfortable 40. I don't mind. Well, I hate you, young disrespectful ass niggas. It's just that my lack of uh, self discipline has made me not feel younger or look younger than what I am. So I'm kind of mad at myself. So that's why it's not okay. Because a few months ago, you would be like 33, 34. Young disrespectful ass niggas. Yeah, yeah. I I I I got him. Don't worry about it. I got him. Give me a couple more years, but. He can't even ride the dope roller coasters. Don't worry about <laughs> what he's talking about, bro. I got him. Don't worry about it. OG shit. All right, but we're not over the hill. No, we just walking still. Okay, it's not. I'm not over it yet. My knees you, just be hurt. Back. Yeah. And, and my and my and my <laughs> ankles. Yo, if I be farting the wrong way, my back hurts. <laughs> Right. So yeah, we old, bro. We are. It's well, okay. But, but with that only, but we're right? like wine. With that only, is in, and that wine is in that knowledge. No, we're like we're you like have knowledge. Wine. You have some knowledge. I I'm not gonna lie. Ever and, since and, I turned forty, serio. you think at los 40, right? No, not that. Tienes, tienes some knowledge. Yeah. I give away so much free game on a daily basis. <laughs> All day, every day, free game. Boom. Here you go. How do you think? Like, like, see. <laughs> Is, but no, I really feel I feel wiser in my old age. Like I see shit coming from a mile away. Like I don't know if that makes any sense, but like my perception is ridiculous. Like, yeah, I just see it coming from a mile away, bro. Like, and I didn't have that when I was younger. You know what I'm saying? When I was younger, I was a little bit more hothead. I was I was a lot more reactive. Now, how how, how does being the cultura, your perception of how to be a, a man in his twenties? And now your culture, let's say you've been to Squarentas. How did that mold you to, to what you are? Well, now? you gotta remember, man. I've been a father since I was 16 years old. Mm. So I've been I've been having to provide and handle business ever since I was, you know, very very young. Now, did, did you feel like like what I explained earlier that as a Latino, and you having a child in that family, a huevo, roof? Problems, man. You yeah, everything we gotta handle, all of that. Right, the whole. Yeah. And we're both young. We're we're both young parents at this time. You get what I'm saying? So, you know, we we had to get it how we could get it. You know what I mean? And, 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 and a lot of it was in the street. We didn't, we didn't have a lot of options. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. No, I feel you, man. That that is the only downfall of being a Latino here. That <coughs> sin papeles, without some. La knowledge. mama de mi hija también. Igual. No, no way to fall back. As a Latino in this country, te vas a chingar, man. So, if any, like you say, if any way you got to get it in America, I think... Yeah, you got to get it. You but the thing is that get it. This, 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 this country is set up for you to fail, like, on paper. But there's no way you lose here if you put your mind to it. No. Imagine, you had... This, this was all an idea at some point, right? This wasn't... This, you haven't been Damn. doing this your whole life, right? No, this man. was an idea. Yeah, I think at I some point, right? And you brought it to life. Two years. And you worked hard, and now you here doing this, right? Yeah, yeah. So shit. Well, shout out. Um, you, you, if you say that, shout out to uh, Ken and Lily. To be honest, because um, I think without you, I'm always say there'd be no cuatro. She was like my door, the first person I asked any fucking question, and she was polite about it. She didn't think like I was coming on to her. She didn't blow me off. She just said, this is what you got to do to get in. 
This is what you gotta talk, how you gotta ask, and you'll be straight. Tasting my my flies to begin with, and then the cake, it was supportive in the very beginning. Brought me, because of her videos, I seen this studio. And I was like, that's fucking dope. The first time I pulled up outside to give her a cake, I said, damn, that's dope. First time I came here, I said, that's for you fucking dope. You smoking, you chilling. And man, that was under two years. And like you said, I'm here now, and I'm going to be at the Kenna Festival again, contigo. So, I mean, like, I don't know. But see, like, I don't know who. But no, but see, look. The thing is, I mean, it's kind of self, no, it's no. kind of self-explanatory, bro. He, he looked at me and was like, contigo. Yeah. Cause he looked, it's like an episode of Narcos. In did you fail place. Spanish in, in high school? <laughs> Three times. Three times. That's what it was, man. Tres timas. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sick and tired of this shit. Too many arms rolling. I think it's dope. <laughs> Can't follow yeah. shit. I don't know who he was before I met you, uh, before I met y'all, but if he was dope, but under two years ago, then he's still yeah. So I'm fucking cool that I'm, like, I'm, I'm here. Might. I think I, I think it's cool that I'm here. I'm I might. I, I got cannabis. With, I'm part of fucking cannabis. I'm somebody in Cannabis. And listen, and even if my part fucking of that shit, brand, bro. even if my mm. brand don't ever make it out here and never ever give up or somebody comes behind me with some dope ass Latino shit, it wouldn't happen without Cuatro Veinte. There be no pinche empanadas, no pupusas, no... Well, shout out to Cannabis because he was doing that. Oh, my nigga Cannabis been holding it down for a long time. But yeah. the whole, uh, you know, the, to change the edible things to on a different thing. Like, I don't make edibles. I make Mexican desserts. So I think, like... I'm gonna go down and tell him again what you make. Here. I'm a Mexican dessert. dessert. Gang, big Kush. Special Spaghetti brand of special shit. So I think my name is gonna go down along with your name, to be honest. I said. They're gonna say District Dab is DC and they're gonna march somewhere in that motherfucking list. Cuatro Veinte, Big Kush is gonna be there. And they, when I'm like Ochenta, right? That motherfucker that was like, yeah, I don't like Flood. Yo. They don't even got to say the name. They no. never forget the history, Papa. You know what I'm saying? The name means nothing. It's the history you make with it. You know what I'm talking about? And I think that's what I'm trying to do here, guys. I'm not trying to promote me or my brand, but I just want to sit back, have some Latino perspective on certain topics that are in my mind, certain topics that go down. Like, you know, Burner getting that cookie shit. That's dope, right? Not for Moteros only, but because that's a Latino who did it. <laughs> That's a Latino who's blowing up some Mota market. Are you not proud that it's a Latino blowing up the Mota market? Not only the Gang. Mota market is dope and free, <laughs> but it's a Latino. Those are the kind of things that I want to bring out with this show. Flores y Cultura, Le Smoke, but it's not a Montero show. But we are fumando. Can Yo, I my man on my live right now, A. Gomez, said, tell him, puro Mexico. That's what's up. That's what's up. You see the macara. That's uh, Ego Mrs. Who, uh who performed on your show, man. That Mexican dude? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this song right here is the uh, Jamaican Vato. What's his name by Sleazy? Which way am I going? I'm going the wrong way. Either way, man. I'll be, man, I'll be way. high. I'll be either high. way, because he's got both different colors. Hold on. What, 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 how you want? It is. It is, man. Uh, in this the minute, is the way it's supposed we'll to be. Chance. I'm gonna hook you up. A little bit of big push. Gracias. Appreciate you. Like, you have no fucking idea. I had another friend too. 23 years old. She recently passed away. Breast cancer. Shout out, hot little peach. Also her too, man. Uh, Ruby. I met her at a tattoo shop. And then, like, two months later, came out with a fly. And I think she was the actual first person who tried it and bought it. And was the first person who didn't mind paying 150 for a fucking big fly. And then when I said, listen, I think it's worth more. This bitch is worth 300. Shorty said, yeah, no problem. They give me two. And she supported. And my treats helped her out through the chemo and everything. But eventually, and she lived behind like a one-year-old boy. And her husband, a year before that, lost his dad. So it's tough for the homeboy. And it kind of sucks. But those are the very first two people that kind of helped me push and keep going. And this is where I'm standing right now. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Flores y Cultura, man. Cada Latino is for us. Next week, let's talk some more shit. See where we go. 
Yo, but we gotta have like a, a Telemundo type segment on this motherfucker, bro. Right, like, I think so. we got come on. There's bro. not enough Spanish. Right. We, well, need actually, a, we need. We need. I got a, I got a DJ, right? But he, <laughs> yeah. I want to be like, yeah, man. Yeah. I want to be like your Don Francisco or something. Listen, bro. I, ha- I have a DJ who comes out January, uh, February third, fifth, or something like that. But he should be ready by like the fourth episode. And he's gonna be like during the breaks. He'll just be there playing Latino music, bachata, salsa, whatever. So that while we're smoking and we're just chilling. It's Latino vibe. Yeah. Yeah. No, but Lily is. She's just like over here, like, yeah, she know what she's doing. Tink, runko, tink, 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 tink. Whatever, man. But I'm just trying to have a little Latino vibe, something different than what has been going on. And if you guys like it, we can keep it on and we'll do what you did. 40 episodes, whatever. 52. 52? 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. How many did you do? Like how old 120 James? something. All right, bet. So can we beat that? <laughs> Talking Drip was 50. I got more episodes than Game of Thrones. <laughs> Vato got uh, 100. No, 125. 125. Bro, I'm North telling you there was way more. So we got 124. Thank you. To make some history. This is I number one. This it. is number two. Number two. Yo, number two is in the books, bro. You number did it. Two, I think so. You did it. Everybody make some motherfucking noise. Appreciate it. Next week, I hope we have the intro for the show already and everything. I appreciate everybody, man. And I think if I'm done and my man's still busy, then I'll go ahead and give you a little bit of the pastelito that I brought. Hey. Yeah, man. Hey. Yeah. Gang. Hey. Yo, motherfucking Koala Sesh TV. It's the Koala Takeover. Right, Peach, she not here? Right. Peach is kicking her feet up in Jamaica right now, bro. Oh. Sure. She's smoking like fast. Living her best better. life. She's smoking regular. <laughs> best life. She's smoking uh, Reginald no, Revis. Yeah. She's smoking skinny. She is she smoking, smoking that skinny. bush. She's smoking skinny. She's smoking huff, bro. She is separating seeds. Yeah. Yeah. As we She's speak. She's smoking huff, bro. She's smoking stoner so much. Peach, the next <laughs> She's smoking seeds that we burn between now and we got to go. Peach, Peach coming home Facts. sterile. Facts. Right? You know what's the funniest oh, thing God. in the world? You got some I bet you if she asks for it by his real name, they'll give it to uh, her. You really it's called Funto Leaf, Leaf, and I assure you that it grows fucking everywhere out there. I know. Yeah. So, she's looking for that shit in the eighth bag that looks like Bro, fucking something you put on your pizza. Put it like it's an actual leaf. Yo, it's over. We did it. Thank you very much for coming, man. Stay tuned for some Big Kush and... uh what, you, what did you call it? Koala Sesh TV? Koala Sesh TV? Koala Sesh TV. The takeover. Vivo al enemigo. Haremos sentir el mismo dolor. Me mataron uno, devuelvo el favor. Pa' que sientan lo que yo. Dime si me entiendes. Ando con un par de dementes. Sin miedo a la mala. Las veces dijeron cosas que no debían. Como un grind de noche y de día. Dijeron no podía. Perdona los señores, no sabían. Las pendejadas que decían. Tantas veces dijeron cosas. Que no debían Yo man grind de noche y de día Dijeron no podía Perdona los señores no sabía Las pendejadas que decían Mucha gente que no creía en mí Todos me dieron la espalda Solo tuve que salir Mi camino lo seguí Muchas veces yo caí Pero lamentablemente Papá tuvo que partir Este sí es un dolor inimaginable También sé muchas cosas Pero dudo que yo hable No he pasado frío No he pasado hambre Gracias a mi hermano Gracias a mi madre Si quieren tocarlos Va a correr la sangre Si no te gusta el juego Puedes retirarte Puedes retirarte en cualquier momento, tú ya lo perdiste, es en verdad Las veces dijeron cosas que no debían Yo man grind de noche y de día Dijeron no podía, perdona a los señores, no sabían Las pendejadas que decían Tantas veces dijeron cosas que no debían Yo man grind de noche y de día Dijeron no podía, perdona a los señores, no sabían Las pendejadas que decían